Hello, this is Daryl as a service. This is a series about how to create and set up a Microsoft team. Um, we're going to cover off a number of different things in this series just to get you up and started so that you can uh, get your teamwork going very quickly. Now, uh, the first episode we're going to cover off is around how to create this team and some things to think about uh, before you do so because you could go ahead and create a team for a whole lot of purposes, but you might be duplicating effort. And the more teams you create, the more difficult it is to uh, to know which team to put where and where to have your conversations. So, what is the purpose of your team is the first thing to think about. Think about um, whether it is for a business unit, a department. Is it for a project? Is it for creating a community? Have a clear mind, a clear thing in mind about what the purpose of your team is and uh, use that in the way that you name it and the way that you describe it. Who is in your team is the next thing to consider. Um, so I always think about um, audiences whenever I'm doing things within Microsoft Teams. Who am I talking to? Who am I trying to work with? And this very much reflects the way that we work together as a team. So uh, who is in your team? Think about the, the number of people that need to be part of that team for your teamwork. With those two things in mind, what is your purpose and what is your team? Is there already a team that exists that you could repurpose with these people? Don't go and create a team just because you have uh, another purpose or another thing. Um, think about if it's the same group of people, then rather than creating another space for them to go, how about you create something like a channel? Use an existing channel to, um, for that new purpose or that new activity for that team. Now, it's really important to think about this way because in enthusiasm with Microsoft Teams, people will create teams for all sorts of reasons, just to work on one document or um, basically trying to create communities and, and pockets of things and, and all places. And then they've got to try and work to get people into that team. The more teams we're invited to, the harder it is to uh, focus our attention on things and, and really manage that. So those are a few things to think about, repurposing that team that you might uh, already have. Now, as you're creating your team, have ready your team name. Think of your team name. If you come from an organization or a school, uh, they may have some guidelines around how to name your team. Perhaps it's your, your department first and then the, the purpose of the team, if it's maybe a project, um, or you might be lucky enough to have some software that does this for you. But do consider your name and make it clear, but not too long because you do have a limit to the number of characters that will display within, a, within the team application. Uh, think of your team description so that when people are looking for a team to join, that they can clearly see what the purpose of that team is for. And it's optional, but it does help to have a team logo. There are a lot of uh, teams that are created that just use initials and then you're left with lots of colorful boxes with letters, but nothing that really stands out that makes it you know, appear to be that that is your team. So those are a few things to think about. What we're going to do is uh, get into the uh, a team itself. And um, we're going to be looking at a demo, demo environment. So I apologize for not having everything all perfect, but we're going to have a quick look at creating a team. Let's get into that. Go. Um, so we are in Microsoft Teams. Uh, we have um, some existing teams already. You're probably in the same kind of environment already. At the bottom of our list of teams in the Teams app, we're going to click Join or Create a Team. Uh, we're going to use Create a Team. And we can build a team from scratch, or maybe there's an existing team or Office 365 group that we could use. Again, if your organization or school uh, or group have already made a team template, then it's a good place to start. We'll have a quick look at what that looks like. We go through here. We've got a choice of whether we want to base it on an existing team. And then there's a list of teams that, that um, we can choose from. That will list all the teams that you have access to and uh, that you uh, might be able to base it off. So if you wanted to um, get organized and you create a, a good team that has a great basic structure, you could use that as a template. Maybe use an underscore character in the name of your team so it's easy to find. Let's go back and create a team from scratch. Maybe we'll use this team to create a template. 
build a team from scratch. We've got a few choices here. Private team. Now this is where you basically have to have an invite to come into the team and uh, you can't get into the team unless the team owner allows you. You can create a public team which allows people to find the team and then choose to join it. And then an org wide team, there's a used really um, sparingly and that is when you are able to invite everyone into the team. Um, and probably if you're going to use that, it's just going to be one team for that purpose. Oh, we're going to start with a public team because we want to allow people to become part of this team. We're going to give this team a name. This team's going to be, um, let's say, Modern Workplace Team. Right, and for the purpose of this, this is our uh, business unit in our business. Right, so we're giving it a clear name, we're giving it a description, people are going to be able to find that. That's all we need to do. It's good to have something a bit more um, descriptive and uh, to give that team name um, some good thought. What's happening in the background is it's creating all the different resources that we can use to, to facilitate teamwork. Um, and at this point we can start adding people, but I want us to pause right there. Yes, it's encouraging you to try and create a team and immediately add people, but in the next video we're going to show you how to set up this team before you add people. Because there's a right way to create a team and a wrong way, and I think the wrong way is to rush into it, not give anyone any warning, not have it all set up, have it all in tumbleweeds, we want to give it a bit of structure, make it welcoming and, and give it some guidance before we invite people in. So let's pause there. We'll finish off with, with that part of the episode. Thanks for, for kicking in and joining in and we'll see you soon on the next episode. Um, if you're keen to continue along with me in this journey, I'm going to do my best to put these episodes out um, quickly because I know there's a, a need right now, but um, thanks for tuning in. That's where to follow me. And you'll see me on the next one, hopefully. Bye for now.